Okay. I'm glad I finally got around to doing a Joe DiOrio lick. I actually uh, had the privilege of studying with him for a couple of years, and he's just such an incredible player and such a wealth of knowledge and such a nice guy. I really can't say enough good things about him, and I'm forever grateful for everything he's done for me. And um, this lick is from a book that he wrote called Fusion or Fusion Guitar, Fusion Guitar Solos, something like that. And it's a really cool book. It's basically just a book of a bunch of uh, solos just written over standards, like a hand, couple different standards he picks. And uh, he just writes some solos over them, some modern like intervallic type stuff. And I would highly recommend it if you're uh, if you're really into learning like lines and patterns and stuff like that. It's a great book. It's got so much interesting stuff in there. And this is from that. So this is a 251 to G major. So we're starting uh, on our A minor 7 chord. And right off the bat, as you're going to see, it starts with some fourths and some intervallic type shapes, which Joe, you know, is famous for using a lot of that kind of stuff. So we start with our pinky on the B note on the second string. And then the pinky is also going to go to the E on the first string. And then I pull my pinky off to my middle finger from E to D. So and then my middle finger moves up a string to A on the second string. So right off the bat, that's kind of weird because there's a lot of stuff going on with the pinky there. A lot of the stuff he does is very demanding on the pinky. Um, so I'd recommend just do that a little bit, just get comfortable with that. And then after that, then you go to E on the third string with your pointer finger. So you have, and then back to the A with your middle finger. And from there, we shift down to the seventh position. We put our pointer finger on the seventh fret of the third string. And then our pointer finger goes to the seventh fret on the fourth string. So that's the first little A minor pattern. So if you just look at what's going on there, it's a bunch of fourths, right? Those first two notes are fourths. The next three notes are fourths. You back up and then the D and A down here, it's just this down an octave so it's like inverting the fourths very cool like open kind of sound and then this is really cool because what he does is he takes that first and so now that was all over the a minor chord now when we get to d7 he takes that same two starting notes he just slides down a fret which makes perfect sense because if you want to make it alter now you lower these two notes and now against d it's the sharp five and the flat nine so you can think of that when you're thinking over a 2-5-1 for the 2 chord, if you play the 9 and the 5, right? And then slide both of them down a half step, it becomes the sharp 5 and the flat 9 of the dominant chord. Okay, so he plays those two notes, B flat with your pinky, and then E flat with your pinky, and then the middle finger goes to A flat on the second string. And then pointer finger on E flat. I'm picking all those notes. After you hit the E flat, you slide down a fret with your pointer finger on the D and then pick the E flat again. So And you know what? When I'm doing that, I'm sliding down with my pointer finger and I'm coming back with my middle finger. I just realized. And from there, the pinky jumps up to D on the first string and then middle finger on C and you pull off to B with your pointer finger and that's where it resolves to G major so you're resolving to the third of the G.